Hello, I am Gary Branner of Renarb Studios Comics. It's probably the seventh time I've tried this, but uh, hopefully I don't mess up or the batteries die on me again. Anyway, this is my show, Renarb Studios Comics, where I uh, review the things I've read, talk about uh, things I've backed, and um, tell you where you can get those things that I've backed or where they're available after the Kickstarter has ended, all that fun stuff. But today I don't have things that I've read right now, so I'm going to jump right into Renarb Studio Comics mailbox. And uh, what is in my mailbox this week? It just arrived today, actually. I've only got one thing. This is from a Utah artist. Uh, Tyler Carpenter sent me an entity. Number one, it is the trade paperback version. Uh, I backed this on Kickstarter. And, uh, yep, Tyler Carpenter and Joe Wong is the artist. So I can't wait to read this. It's going in my read pile. My read pile's pretty huge right now, so it's going to be a while till I read this one. But, yes, Entity, trade paperback one, going into the read pile. Awesome. And so instead of uh, telling you about the comics I've read, um, I'm going to be telling you about, I'm going to be telling you, did I say? I'm going to be telling you about my own comic book, Peter Pan the Vampire. Um, while I bag and board my comics, and I also am going to be cutting some of my comics. What I do is I I have a mini comic, and uh, it's about the size of a credit card. I have Kablam printing uh, print three of these along the spines, and then I use the other half for a uh, flyer. So that's pretty cool, but. You guys could easily do that. You put them down the spine. That makes them easier to uh, to open up and staple and all that fun stuff. So I'm going to be cutting these into mini comics and I'm going to be bagging and boarding those too. So, yep, that's a cool thing to do if you, uh, if you want to give out a Halloween comic book. They're mini. I've been doing that for free comic book days and I'm going to be doing that for Halloween. So check that out. That's what I'm going to be doing while I talk to you about the Kickstarters I've back, backed and am backing and that you should know about. So let's get in on that. First, though, I'd like to mention that I am wearing a Peter Pan Funko shirt right now. Funko does not make a Peter Pan shirt, but I've searched and searched, tried to find one to buy, and uh, they do not have one for sale. Um... They did not have one for sale on their site, so I had to make one. And I'm kind of under that philosophy where if you can't find what you want to buy, then you make it. Okay, did I mess that up? Is it still working? Alright, looks like it's still recording, so yeah, I'm going to get in on that right now and uh, start cutting and trimming my comics. So, let's see here. Put these over here, and we'll start. My trimmer actually only cuts 12 pages at a time, so I have to open it and trim off that much of it. There we go. Now those are flyers. See? Cool, huh? Turn it around. And right there on the Kablam ad. Awesome. So, yeah, like I was saying, I did this one year for Free Comic Book Day. And uh, I like the idea of it that there's not a lot of mini comic books out there like this. So, I thought I would do it this way. have a little something different on the free comic book tables that you can pick, you know? Because, yeah, you go to free comic book day and it, it's all generally the same. And I, as an independent artist, I want to stick out in people's minds, especially the ones that come to the Utah shops here to pick up the books. So that's one reason I did the mini comic. 
let's see. So, he's a vampire, the comic book that I make. Um, I've, a long time ago, I, I went to the movie theater with my friends, and we saw Interview with a Vampire. And there is a scene where uh, Claudia, Claudia the vampire that Lewis uh, made into a vampire, the little girl played by Kirsten Dunst, there's a scene where she's complaining that she will never be an, an adult woman. That, um, she's complaining that she will never know what it's like to be an adult, never know what it's like to grow up. And that instantly got me thinking, Peter Pan is a vampire. And so uh, that's what spurred it on for, from there. All I've been thinking about is making a Peter Pan the Vampire comic book. So here we are. I have finally got three published and I'm still making them. Um, oh yeah, and I was, a, I was a big fan of Hook with Robin Williams when I was a kid and so that's where the Peter Pan part comes from it is ow that staple whoops is poking straight up well wow, both of those staples are poking straight up alright but yeah I was thinking yeah Peter Pan's a vampire and it totally makes sense and after coming to, to that realization story wise uh, I started thinking that a lot of other fairy care fairy tale characters were also vampires or some other mythical creature like uh the beast is aware and stuff like that the three little pigs are wares all sorts of different fun can be had by once you start thinking of the characters as real and hiding among us Okay, that staple poking up is causing some problems. There we go. Get it on my line. So, yeah, and I, I owe one of these mini puppies to a uh, guy named Charlie Stickney who makes a White Ash comic. He, uh, he backed my, co my pins, my alien pin, and uh, uh, one of the uh, stretch goals was that everybody who backed at the physical reward will get a mini comic from me and I ran out print wise and I finally got them in finally cutting them so I'm finally going to be sending these out to the one and only backer who didn't get one Charlie Stickney who makes White Ash comics and that left the, leaving that hanging in the air from someone who I enjoy reading his comics his and uh, Connor Connor Hughes, I think is the artist on White Ash. Man, I, so it's been bugging me that he didn't have this yet. So I'm sending it out to you as soon as I get these cut and stapled. So that would be finally off of my conscience. Well, I don't think I've been trimming that part on all of them. Alright, dang it, I wish there was some way I can uh, answer questions while I'm doing this, but I don't have any questions to answer. Let's see, what else can I tell you about Peter Pan and Vampire? So yeah, I have been working on this since high school of 96, is when I, I had a rough version there I made in school as my class assignment for studio cl art class with Mr. Hyde, my favorite art teacher, and uh, I never finished that version of Peter Pan the Vampire. I had a few pages done, and I mailed them out to a place as a uh, portfolio. I was stupid to not send out copies. I was a teenager. I didn't know any better, and so I never saw them again, and then uh, I I got the bug of making a comic book again, but I didn't believe in my own writing. So I drew a story called Bruno by uh, Dean Koontz. And that was fun, learning and everything, but I ran into another problem. Making uh, Dean Koontz, 
who's an awesome writer, one of his books into a comic means I couldn't do anything with it. It's not my property. And so I could use it as a portfolio, yes, but I could not get it printed up and I could not sell it. So I kind of bit myself on that one. And uh, so then I thought, okay, well, I'm going to try again with the Peter Pan, the vampire. I will write it. I wrote out a new script and drew new pages. And I actually loved the story that I made. I was no longer ashamed of it, like I was of my high school version. And so here we are now. Um, I finally got this completed in 2009 and published at, well I published it somewhere else first before going to Kablam. Um, and it came out really horrible. The colors were really light and so, but when I found Kablam, uh, I have never been happier with a print job. Uh, they, they have been treating me well since I go there since uh, printing through them and their awesome system of uh, wearing their shirt to um, sign signings and uh, whatnot. Oh, that's it. So those are all done and cut. Now let's move on to stapling them and bagging them. So yeah. Uh, they print good. They give me the t-shirt to wear at their signings and every time I wear their shirt I get a credit which I did. I used to have this art class I taught. Where is my stapler? Okay. used to teach this art class where um, I would wear the shirt and get ten dollars credit so I did a lot of a lot of those art art class shows and um, but now that COVID's a thing, I can't really gather together and do those. Oh, shoot. You know how that is. Um, and my, the turnout here in uh, Tree Mountain, Garland, Riverside area. Riverside's where I live. It's all generally the same place. Sorry, I have to redo this staple. It's bugging me. It's not quite straight. Ouch. I wish I had a remover, or a screwdriver at least. Alright, let's try that one again. But yeah, my uh, Draw Night art class fell through. Attendance was really down, so I just stopped doing it. These little bag and board things are, you've probably seen these. Uh, you buy these for your baseball cards. And uh, it's just a, a hard plastic top loader card thing. Yep, that's it. Let's see. So I'm slipping those in there. So yeah, there we go. What do you think? It's pretty cool, right? And now I got a bunch of flyers too that I can use. Draw night, that's my little class. I need to make new flyers though. Get rid of that. Um, so yeah, I will be sending that out to you, Charlie, pretty soon. As soon as I'm done with this. But yeah, that's where I'm standing. Uh, I had to cancel draw night. Uh, one of these days, when I retire from my full-time job, I will open up my own comic shop, not really because there's a lot of money in comic shops, I know better. I actually live in a place where comic shops are few and far between. They open up, they don't last long, and then they soon close. And uh, But it's my dream when I retire to open up my own comic shop, which is mostly going to be a school for teaching uh, kids how to make comics. And whenever a kid completes the uh, education and makes his comic, or her, their comic will be sitting on the spin rack at the front 
We're only local artists in this uh, vicinity area uh, can display their comics. Of course, I, I will give the full uh, royalties to the kid that completes the class. My only uh, fee is that I put my rent in Arbalian in the top corner. But that's not really a high price, is it? And yeah, my comic shop will be Rent Arb Studios Comic Shop. So that's what my dream when I retire. But that probably won't be until 2040, so I still got 20 more years cleaning bathrooms at the old Wally World. Who knows? There we go, one more stapled. Oh shoot, did I even staple that last one? I did not. Yeah, I did. Duh. All right. So, oh shoot. I just remembered that I could be talking about some Kickstarters. So, let's move on from uh, my dreams of making a comic shop. It's kind of sad here, too, where I live. I have to drive about an hour away is where my comic shop is. The closest comic shop to me. It's called Gamers Asylum. It's in Ogden, Utah. So there's a, a lot of towns between me and my comic shop. But that's where I go. It's, so where it's far away, I have a hold there. And it, about at least once a month, I try to get in there. Right now, the only comic waiting for me, they've said through uh, text, is some White Ash comics. And you know how I am about White Ash comics. I've got all the Kickstarter versions, and now I'm getting the comic shop versions. Okay, so let's move on to uh, talking about what's on Kickstarter right now. And This first comic is actually on Indiegogo. It is like a site like Kickstarter, and it is called She. She is about an intergalactic bounty hunter, and she is... It's a hardback book. It's not your normal comic-sized book. I've actually got it. I thought I'd grab it right now and show you. So this has got a cool die-cut cover. Her helmet and her face shield are the cover. And that's uh, she right there. So this she is by... Uh, oh, where's the credits page? I think it's by uh, Ryan K. Lindsay and Chris Panda. That's what it says along the spine. But yeah, this is a hardback. It's awesome. It was a good read. I can't wait for more to come out. And you can get it right now on Indiegogo. So you do check that one out. Get yourself some copies of that. Miskatonic High meets Lovecraft P.I. is a crossover that is on Kickstarter right now. I'm a big fan of uh, Miskatonic High. And I am super excited about this Lovecraft P.I. crossover. Lovecraft P.I. is, I just barely bought two of his trades from Etsy. And we'll be reading those soon. They're in my read pile. So I can't wait to read those. That'll be fun to read right before the uh, Miskatonic High and Lovecraft P.I. crossover comes into my mailbox. So those are in my read pile. Lovecraft P.I. I can't wait to read that. Um, it's a story about what if Lovecraft was a detective and he's solving cases that are, you know, kind of spooky, super supernatural, whatnot. And I think it's even in his own times, which I don't know when Lovecraft was. Is that the 50s? Maybe. I'll, I'm sure I'll know after I read the comic. Next up on Kickstarter is Wild Cosmos number three. So I have backed Wild Cosmos number three. Number two is next in my read pile, so the next time I talk to you about Wild Cosmos, it will be because I read number two. So Wild Cosmos number three on Kickstarter right now till October 16th. Now, Vampire Emmy and the Garbage Girl is a comic I got when I backed Destiny New York a while ago, well, a couple of years ago, uh, and I got that as an add-on. Vampire Garbage Girl 
for Vampire Emmy and the Garbage Girl. Uh, it was a short comic, and I I tweeted to him a hundred times, like, dude, you need to make more of this. Well, he listened to all those tweets from me and other people, and he is making that right now. It's on Kickstarter until October 16th. Next up is Jason Brubaker's Phobos. It's on Kickstarter. I have a pilot copy of Phobos, and uh, it was it's an awesome Frankenstein kind of story. And so I'm glad I'm back in that one to get the hardback version. Till number three is on Kickstarter right now. Till is by Catalyst Comics. Really good stuff. Check that one out. And next up is uh, Chronicles of Horror by Sierra Nova Comics. That one's on until October 31st. Check it out on Kickstarter. It is a 16-page anthology series of uh, horror stories. The Tita Awakening, it's on Indiegogo. It is from the people who made uh, Morgan Le Fay a comic that I like. A bunch of other comics I've backed too, but I haven't read those yet. So check out Vitita Awakening on Indiegogo. Next up is After the Gold Rush. That's one I've wanted to back for a long time. Now it's in trade paperback form. So I'm getting the whole story in one sitting. That one's on Kickstarter till November 1st, After the Gold Rush. And also uh, Stake presents Jessamy, number one. That's on Kickstarter right now. It just barely got on there today, and I backed it this morning. Uh, I've already read The Stake, number one. It was good stuff. Black and white comic. Did I staple this one? Yes, I did. Okay. So The Stake, Jessamy, present, The Stake presents Jessamy, number one, on there until November 12th. So get on there, back that. Frenemies, Lost Planet. That one sounds awesome. A uh, bunch of kids get stuck on a planet and have to uh, survive and get home. So check out Frenemies on Lost Planet. It's on Kickstarter till the middle of November. And Starlight number two. Starlight number two is uh, kickstarting again. The first time around they kickstarted Starlight number two and uh, it did not meet funding. And so now they're trying again, different goals, different setup, and uh, different methods, and hopefully they pass because I really want to read Starlight number two. So you guys go check it out, back it so that I could get mine. Starlight number two, check that one out. Oh shoot, here's one, Ava's Demon, but uh, A Ava's Demon might have ended. So if you can, if you check out Ava's Demon on Kickstarter right now. It's probably over and you missed it. Sorry guys. Had a lot to do today so I wasn't able to get that out sooner. Super Scouts number three is on uh, Kickstarter right now. I can't wait to read the finale of that because the first two Super Scouts was an awesome read. So check out Super Scouts before November 4th. Ooh, that was my computer. Loud. Super Scouts number three on Kickstarter till November 4th. Render Waves Colorpedia is a book about how to color comics. Um, it's on Kickstarter. Ew, it's only got hours left. Shoot, that's another one I should have mentioned earlier. So check out Render Waves Colorpedia, how to color comics on Kickstarter right now. Um, and I mean right now, check it out because there are only hours to go on it. Check it out. XCT Infinity Number One is on Kickstarter till October 17th. I recommend checking that one out. It's got awesome art. So, a bunch of people throughout all of history have been uh, abducted from their timelines and are forced to fight in an arena, kind of like uh, um, Thor Ragnarok style, Thor versus Hulk. So check that one out. That one sounds cool. Vampire Bloodlines is on Kickstarter until October 24th. And I'm a sucker for vampire stories, so that one sounds awesome. It's even got a lot of cosplay covers. That's a pretty cool idea. I might look into doing some of that myself. 
And Against the World, that one's, uh, I think, from the same people that did the uh, Vitita Awakening. It's from Evoluzion. Evoluzion. I don't know how to pronounce that. Evoluzion Publishing. Um, yeah. They're the ones who did uh, Love University. So, Against the World is on Kickstarter till October 27th. Check that one out. And Nightmare, Work, Nightmare 1 Reloaded is on Kickstarter right now till October 31st. And it is a about a uh, girl that sees demons or opens portals to demons. And she's trying to stop them, I think. So that one looks cool. Check that one out. That's all the Kickstarters I have for today. That is the last comic for me to bag. Uh, I have to stop now because I have to go to a plasma appointment. Donate some plasma to uh, a center that turns it into leukemia medicine. So that's all for today. I will get with you some other time. One thing I did want to mention is on my uh, IndiePlanet.com, if you search for Peter Pan the Vampire, you will see Peter Pan the Vampire number one, but you'll also see another number one. There is one little difference between these two, is one is in black and white and one is in color. So it's two Peter Pan the Vampires, one's cheaper because it's in black and white. Check those out if you want the hard copies. If you want to download Peter Pan the Vampire for free, and read it on your phone, you can do that as well on uh, IndiePlanet.com. Go to IndiePlanet.com, check out Peter Pan the Vampire. You can download three different issues, one, two, and three, for free to your phone. Or you can help me out and get the hardbacks, or hard copies, floppies. So that's all I've got for today. Goodbye. Thank you for watching Rentnarb Studios, Peter Pan the Vampire creator, Gary Brantner, on YouTube. Bye.